Hello there, I'm Black Bright and welcome to my channel. If you like it, please subscribe and share. Click the thumbs up button and um, yes, that's about it for now. Um, last night I was listening to one of these YouTube channels and I was listening to an attorney who was really upset because her clients were not getting the services that they were paying for. Now she was talking about the ILRP and how they're paying £1,052.50 um, £1, for the um, ILR application. On top of that, they're paying the immigration health surcharge. On top of that, they were being asked if they wanted the... Um, the application to be processed quickly for an extra between £60 and £100 for the premium and that wasn't even being turned around in 24 hours it's now been extended to between five and seven days. Now whilst the Home Office have said that we cannot you know on their website it says they can turn around applications within six months now they're talking about it could be um, nine months, it could be a year, it could be 18 months, depending on the complexities. That is not my argument. My argument is, is that when migrants or anybody is paying for a service, they expect to be, they expect to receive the service that they're paying for. And if they don't receive that service, they'll expect a refund. Now, let me use broadband for an example. We pay a monthly fee for broadband, we get broadband, and if for any reason it goes down, we get a refund for the service we do not receive. And if we're not happy with the service, we go to another provider. We can't go to another provider with the home office. We're stuck with the home office. But that does not mean that they sh should be allowed not to provide a service that people are paying for. Now, if somebody's made an error, if they're keeping the money, they should allow for that error to be corrected or provide a refund. With any service that you receive that is poor, you expect a refund. If somebody can't provide the service, you expect a refund. So provided you have done the application form, you followed their instructions and paid the fee, if that for any reason they cannot provide that service, they should issue a refund. I believe that in taking money from people for a service and not providing that service by making excuses, by creating obstacles, they are in breach of contract or in breach of fiduciary duty. Fiduciary duty means that, you know, it's somebody like the Home Office, we hold them in trust. We, you know, we, we can't do anything else. They're meant to be a reliable institution. They're meant to have integrity. So we hold them in trust when we give them their app, our applications, when we pay our money. And we expect to receive um, a non-discriminatory response a fair response, and we expect to receive the service for which we've paid. Now, if, if the Home Office are not exercising a fiduciary duty to their clients, they are in breach. Now, let me tell you what the definition of a, um, fiduciary duty is, or breaching fiduciary duty. A person acting in a fiduciary capacity is held to a high standard of honesty, and full disclosure in regard to the client and must not obtain a personal benefit at the expense of the client. Now I was think, wondering to myself, what is the personal benefit in order for this, this breach of fiduciary um, contract, no, breach of fiduciary duty to apply? Well, the the people who work on the application, they're being paid a salary. That's a personal benefit. We've heard that there are targets to be met, whether it's targets to reduce net migration, whether it's targets to reject application, whether it's targets because of these um, the algorithm bias within the application structure and systems, they are meant to meet targets. 
with any target, there's always a reward. So, to, so for me, in my opinion, that's a personal benefit. Now, I'm sure that solicitors would have jumped on this a long time ago if my thoughts were valid. I'm just throwing it out there. I'd be interested in your thoughts about my thoughts or my opinion. No hostile responses, please. It's not necessary. You can just answer the question, but you don't have to be hostile. I've been getting some hostile responses recently. I'm not quite sure why that is, but hey, each to their own. I just usually delete them. Anyway, so um, in in response to that, yeah, I I think that if if you take out a contract, and that is a contract, I pay you money. No, I complete a form for a service, the service being the indefinite leave to remain. That is what I expect to receive when I pay over a thousand pounds sometimes in the region of 1,500, could be 3,000 depending on the circumstances. But I pay that on the understanding I am going to get a service in return. I am going to get my indefinite leave to remain then. If I don't get my indefinite leave to remain, I would expect a refund. The same way as if I bought a dress and I didn't like the, well, not that I didn't like it, that's, that's not a good example. But use the broadband or any kind of service. You take your car for an MOT or a service, they service your car, you pay the money and you get your car back. It's the same principle. With their clients are paying for a service. And if they don't get a service, they should get a refund. The same way broadband, if your broadband isn't working, you get a refund. That's the best um, example I can give. So if you feel that the Home Office is breaching contract by not um, providing the service that people are paying for and actually holding on to that money, what do you think? Would, would, do you agree with me or do you think that they have a right to hold on to that money, even though they're unable to provide the service. I mean, some, some people get the service. A lot of people haven't. A lot of people have been told that they've done something wrong. So they, they you know, because they've made an error, they can't get their money back. Some, you know, a lot of times they put these little clauses on the website to say, you know, it's not going to be six months, it's going to be 12 months. But if they actually got the service that they were paying for, regardless if they waited six months or 18 months, that wouldn't be so bad. But if they're not receiving the service at all, which has happened in a lot of cases, I believe that's a breach of contract and a breach of fiduciary duty. So your comments, please. Keeping this one short and sweet. Thank you. Bye-bye.